Welcome everyone to Map Time. Um, I'm glad to see everyone here. Um, so today uh, we'll be joined by Maj Dal Shahabi. Um, and for those of you that, uh, for whom this is your first time, uh, this is uh, Map Time. It's a series of uh, chats uh, with different people that work with maps. So map historians, uh, cartographers, librarians. Um, we accept all kinds, uh, so long as you're interested in maps and the history of maps. Um, so today we'll be talking with Mazad al-Shihabi, who's one of the architects of Palestine Open Maps, uh, which works to improve the accessibility of previously forgotten 1940s British Mandate era maps uh, that are uh, in the public domain of, of Palestine. Uh, he studied engineering at the University of Waterloo in Canada and urban planning at the American University of Beirut in Lebanon. Um, so without further preamble, I will bring Majd on here. Just waiting for the connection to work. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, there we go. This is map time. Uh, and we're just waiting for Maj to get here. Here we go. Hi. Hi. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I had uh, forgotten that I always disable uh, camera and uh, microphone access on yeah. Instagram app just for privacy reasons. And yeah. then creative yep. confusion. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, so for those of you that are just joining, um, we're at map time. Uh, the Maj will be talking about uh, some slides from the project and the uh, bit.ly for that is down uh, in the comments there at the bottom. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit about Palestine Open Maps and, and how you came to work on the project? Yeah, thank you, Dave. So uh, again, so they've introduced me. My name is Majd. I'm, so I'm Palestinian, Syrian, Canadian. I, I grew up in Damascus, but I, uh, I studied in Canada and then I'm here in Lebanon. I'm in like the last couple of months of doing my, uh, my master's. University of Beirut. Uh, and so this project actually started, Palestine Open Maps, started when a friend of mine, uh, Ahmed Barkley, who is one of the co-founders of Visualizing Palestine, the account that I'm going live from right now. Um, Ahmed Barkley found these maps in various, like he actually found references to these maps in a lot of different archives, but we never actually were, uh, uh, were able to find the original complete map set. We would find fragments, scans, uh, but we we're never able to find complete map sets. And then at one point we found the entire collection digitized uh, in the British Library uh, archives. And, uh, and it's all in public domain. So we checked all like the, the because it's, it's uh, in, in British uh, law, because so these, these maps were made by the British colonial authorities. So Palestine was colonized by uh, by the by the United Kingdom or between uh, like the 1919 depending on how you count until 48 so that's what's called the man British mandate period 
and what we've uh, during this period, I, I mean, the uh, the British loved mapping their colonies, so I know that they've mapped Palestine, but also like South Asia and everywhere else, everywhere else where they've uh, they've colonized. So they've made these this set of maps, and this set of maps is one to twenty thousand scale. So it's not extremely extremely detailed, but it shows a really interesting survey of what's uh, uh, of of, uh, of most of Palestine, from the, the all the way to the north to the borders of uh, the Naqab Desert or the Negev Desert. Uh, I don't know how how shall we do like how should we talk about the slides? Um, yeah, so people can follow along if they have them. I'm going to bring up uh, I can bring up a couple of the images you sent me sent um, behind okay. me, but I think um, you know we can reference the um, cool reference the slides and uh, so this is an example of one of those uh, British man yeah. era maps. Um, so but... this this map is so yeah just to finish the idea of how the project started, yeah. uh, Ahmed found these maps. We uh, uh, he organized this uh, idea lab where we brought in people from different parts of uh, uh, of the world who are working on data and visualizations, uh, and each one got a different data set. I got the maps with a few friends uh, mm -hmm. uh, who were map people. And uh, and we uh, uh, we just experimented with what can we do with these maps. So what we did is that we took each map has its own its own frame, its own legend, and then what we did is that we uh, cut out the frame and the legend and stitched all of these maps together. There are 155 maps, I think, and then we reproduced this one gigantic map. Uh, mm -hmm. Of these maps, so if you uh, you can uh, if you look at if you go to PalestineOpenMaps.org, uh, you will see that actually maybe I can bring it up here and then point the camera at it. Uh, so I can do that too. There we are. It's okay. I have it in front of me already. So you can see here like these squares. Uh, each one of those squares is an individual map sheet that then be stretched mm -hmm. together. And you can see like the discoloration in the maps here uh, as opposed to here. And I think it's because it's just an archival artifact. I think it's just the way that they were stored on top of each other. And we chose to not mm -hmm. correct for that. We just stayed through to the archival quality of the maps. Um, yeah. And so, you know, the the, the labor you've, you've done to to georeference and and code these maps is really interesting. Can you say a little bit how how that has happened? Kind of who you've worked with and uh, mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, so it's actually it's it's really nice that uh, so one of the things that the British did again as part of their colonization process is that they've created a, a grid, a reference grid for Palestine, um, and the uh, and it's called, it's called the Palestine Grid. I forget what the ISBN number for it is, but uh, uh, it's uh, it just has Palestine perfectly uh, fitting. Uh, so, and each one of those map sheets is uh, fits in one of the squares of the grid. Um, uh, I think it's ten kilometers uh, uh, in each dimension, uh, each one of the sheets. So it was like super easy just on uh, QGIS. We take each one of those sheets. We take the four corners. Actually, before that, we in Photoshop, we had to rectify them because some of them were not like the scans or the photo, mm -hmm. the, the rasters were not perfectly square. So we had to rectify them a little bit in, uh, in Photoshop. Uh, and then in QGIS, you just reference them, georeference them, the, 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 the corners are really easy to to identify in the uh, in the Palestine grid, and there is really simple conversion using QGIS into mm -hmm. geotiffs. Um, yeah. and then we use GDAL to just stitch all of these maps together. Uh, yeah, uh, just using stitching, command line tools. Yeah, the stitching and the the tiling is really smooth on the site, which is great. Uh, it's something we we are striving for and in project that we're doing and 
you know, I think one of the things that's encouraging for for us is in seeing projects like this is we have hundreds of thousands of topographical sets that you know mm. any one sheet is very boring uh but when you get the whole set together and you have a and you make them useful like the way you're doing then it's a really living and exciting uh set and so Absolutely. working with these tools to figure out how to do that i think is really interesting um, you know, Absolutely. One other... Actually, one of the... yeah, tell us. Yeah. No, go, no, go ahead. One of the things that we did is, as part of uh, visualizing Palestine is that we uh, so we've done different exhibitions and we've kind of extracted data out of these maps and visualized them in different ways. So mm -hmm. one of them is uh, we worked with uh, Ahmed actually. So in particular, uh, he worked with a Lebanese artist. His name is Marwan Rishmawi, and they've reproduced. Uh, like objects like this. So uh, wooden objects that are mm -hmm. extru like basically they're extrusions of, uh, oh. uh, of the topographies and they're cut on CNC using CNC on plywood. So mm -hmm. that really nice thing that it wasn't actually, we didn't expect it to happen, but you can see with, because of the, the fact that plywood is made of plies, uh, you can see the layers of the of the plywood and they almost match the topography they're almost like topographic lines right mm -hmm. so uh, uh, we're actually selling these as uh, <laughs> as fundraisers for the project so <laughs> yeah uh, and an uh, and the other thing that we've done is actually it's, which i found it was actually a huge revelation to me was uh uh, we print. We went to one of the uh, to Art Jamil Foundation, uh, which is uh, an art foundation in uh, in Dubai, and we they printed we printed the the entire uh, 155 maps map set onto the ground, and we we stuck them onto the ground so you can actually like literally walk on top of the the giant map, and it was super interesting. I like I saw things that I didn't see before. It's, yeah. And that's what you said, like individual map sheets, you don't see uh, yeah. like the same thing as when you do when you stitch all of them together. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And so the, another piece that you have in there that um, is really interesting is this coding of villages. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, we had in the in the visualization uh, in the website, they're coded with different colors. But can you tell a little bit about how how you get that data? who does the you know, placing of those things, how all that process works? Mm -hmm. So that data, I think, uh, so each one of those dots that you see on the map, so I'll, I'll bring it up in front of me here. Um, so you see, um, this is the entire map set and you see different colors. And when you hover on each, on any village, it gives you the name. Uh, the green ones are the ones that remain right now. So I'm going to turn that off and I'll, I'll show you the everything else is basically ethnically cleansed villages. So in 1948, when Israel was created, there were these Zionist gangs that went through Palestine and ethnically cleansed each village. Uh, and uh, you can see it draws the outline of, of the West Bank here because the West Bank was not ethnically cleansed. Uh, and each one of those dots is uh, has a file associated with it. We got the locations of those dots from uh, from a project created actually by Jewish Israelis uh, in an organization called Zochrot, which literally means memories um, in, in in Hebrew. And they've done a really amazing job at compiling basically files on each one of those villages, uh, there are about 500 of them, and they've kind of documented every single thing there is to know about these villages. Uh, with, uh, and then what's, uh, and then we comp the green dots, because they're not ethnically cleansed, we actually relied on a, a project called Palestine Remembered, which is one of those like really early internet projects that has, like it still looks like it was made in 95. Uh, but it has amazing data in it, uh, palestinerememberedcom I think, or .org. 
but actually, the more interesting part of, of this project, so if you look at the map that you have of Lubia, so Lubia is my village, my grandparents' village. Um, so you can see like the, the name of the village, Lubia, uh, but you see other uh, features, land features around it. So you see Nabi Shuamin, Nabi means prophet, Shuamin is the name of the prophet, I've never heard of him. Uh, there's Maqam al-Khudr, Khudr is also like one of these figures that uh, is very like every every Palestinian village or every Levantine village has a, a shrine to to Al Khudr, uh, and uh, and you can see like original place names. I don't they're not within the frame of this of this map, but you can see original place names. And one of the really nice things that uh, uh, one of the like the big the big project that I'm doing with these maps after I've we've put them on onto the website uh, is that we've uh, uh, we put them on, uh, I started doing these mapathons uh, where uh, I took the, I think our audience are already know uh, OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is like the uh, open data repository for geographic data. And, uh, and it represents like a snapshot, a draft snapshot of what the world looks like in geographic data today. Uh, so what I did is that I took the open source infrastructure of OpenStreetMap and put it on my own server. And I started running these mapathons where I invite people to actually start vectorizing the content of those maps. Okay. So uh, I've run 22 mapathons so far. The last one was in Dubai just in uh, last month. And, uh, uh, and these are like the, what, the two that you see in, in, the, in the photos here are my two favorites. I want to talk a bit about them. Uh, so the, the one on the left is the Badawi refugee camp. So there's Palestinian refugees when they, when they were dispersed, when they were ethnically cleansed, they dispersed all over the Eastern Mediterranean. And this one is, this refugee camp is in Northern Lebanon. And it's actually like the, the, the people in this map uh, or in this photo are mostly are, are mixed mostly like teenagers uh, and they're mostly either Palestinian Lebanese or Palestinian Syrians who then became refu Palestinian Syrian refugees who then became refugees again in Lebanon so this is a community center in in the uh, in the in the camp it's called a camp but it's not a camp it's very well like it's constructed it's a uh, it's been 70 years, so we're not going to stay in tents that long. Uh, so uh, we set up uh, just everyone has their laptop. We bring, uh, like, they start vectorizing the content or, ex like, basically taking every single feature on the historical map, the, the raster image, and then turning that into, uh, uh, into a vector content. Uh, so what's is like religious, like they know that they're from uh, Tarshiha or from Haifa or from Jerusalem or from whatever village, but uh, they they've never seen it because there's never there's almost never artifacts of that of that <laughs> village. And uh, but what they what they do here is that they're actually seeing the maps of the village for the first time, so they know what it looks like. And then the other really nice thing is that they, uh, uh, they're they contributing to an open data set that then researchers, or even them in the future when they go and they do their studies, they, this open data set that we're distributing, anyone can take uh, under an open database license, uh, uh, just attribute it to us and, make sure, and just use it in whatever way you want. You, uh, it's a... Uh, uh, they contribute to this data set and they become contributors to this like project of like an intellectual project that's trying that tries to bring back uh, the history of Palestine into today. Um, and then the one to the right is has no, three true. people. Yeah. The one to the right has my three, my three favorite people in it. So it has my little sister. She's 15 years old and she was my technical assistant. Uh, she, she, I mean, she's 15 years old, so of course she knows everything. Um, 
And then there's my mom, uh, who was who also coordinated the entire thing. And then there's my grandma, who is she was 11 years old when she was ethnically cleansed from Lubia, from the village that I showed before. Uh, and she became a refugee in Syria, and now she's a refugee again in Canada. Finally, she she just got her Canadian citizenship last uh, earlier this year. She's, she became a citizen of anything for the first time of her life. Um, uh, but she actually, she helped us in, uh, in the vectorization process. And I, how did she help us? She actually, uh, uh, so the, the place names that are mentioned in these maps, they're, uh, they're transliterated into Latin alphabet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they're the original place names as they were commonly known back then, but they are transliterated into Latin. Uh, and if you're, if you know Arabic, like the way that vowels work in Arabic is not the same. Yeah. Trying to reverse the transliteration from Latin to Arabic. So what my grandma did is that she, like, as soon as I start pronouncing a place name for her, she immediately knows how to pronounce it and how to reverse the transliteration. Mm -hmm. So it's a really nice intergenerational project that brings in like, like the, the, the elders of our, of our community with the youngest people and just everyone in between, you know? Yeah, no, I, I really love that about the project that it's take, that it's, you know, it, um, it's in its, uh, you're, it's described as in its alpha stage now. And I think um, part of what you're saying is, is building a, um, a kind of data set and also a, um, a repository for not only maps, but also these kind of oral histories, these other mm -hmm. kinds of, of um, data or information that's out there. And I guess uh, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit, a little more about how you imagine it going forward. Like, what are the, what are the directions you're hoping it, it will go in from here? Yeah. So the one thing is that in September, I'm, I'm, I'm starting a PhD based on the questions of these maps. So. Expect me to expect to hear a lot. <laughs> Only five. <years. laughs> uh, but actually, there's a lot of really interesting things that you can do because, like, one of the things that's really exciting is that, like, once we've created this map set, you can actually then go in and just use it in whatever way you want, right? As a researcher, as an artist, as anything. So I have like a few a few ideas of things I want to do. Uh, one is that uh, I'm working with uh, a, a type designer. He he designs fonts uh, in Arabic, uh, and he is uh, his work is fantastic. His, uh, and uh, he he does cre he creates open source fonts. So one of the things that he's done, uh, what I've so this is credit uh, to who's like that researcher researching Palestine maps since like the 60s. Um, uh, he, Salman Abu Sitta went into the Palestine Exploration Fund archives and found this uh, document. And it's, these are the notebooks of the, a guy called the, the Masin scribe. His, his name is uh, Norman Qastali, Qasatli. Um, and you can see like the translation content. So you can see like uh, the the Arabic place names and that Latin transliteration, and and what I'm doing with this type designer is that we're taking uh, the the Arabic his handwriting in Arabic, and we're actually turning that uh, into a font, a computer font. Then what we can do because we have the vector version of this map. Uh, we're creating the vector version of this map, we can reproduce the map with Arabic labels as opposed to the, the Latinized labels. Um, and I think it's, a, to me, it's a, it's a gesture of decolonization. We're trying to bring those maps back to the people who actually created them, like Norman Costoli. Um, yeah. No, that's fantastic. And for those of you that are looking at the slides, that's the last slide in that. Uh, exactly. In that deck. Um, exactly. No, I, I really like that that idea of of using the kind of colonialist data almost against itself. 
Yeah, it's called, I think, in archival theory, they call it reading the archive against its brain. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, and I really like that metaphor. It's, it's, it's visceral, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and in the few, yeah. No, no, There's no, other, no, a ton no. of other things. Like, I, I want to create an exhibition where, you, like, a virtual reality exhibition where you can fly over these maps and, like, because we like the the map set that I'm I'm talking about is the one to twenty thousand scale, but we have other map sets. One is like the oldest one is one uh, from eighteen seventies, from the made by the Palestine Exploration Fund, and it's uh, uh, it's its scale is one to sixty six thousand or something, and it's, it's actually one inch to the mile, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's it's really interesting because it's. Uh, 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 like it shows, like they didn't even have topographic lines. They used hill shading to to mm -hmm. show the topography of the land. Uh, but we have like seven, I think, different uh, map sets, survey map sets, and a few like more zoomed in, like more finer scale uh, city maps. So what we're going to be doing is, uh, what I'd like to do is it's like we layer those maps on top of each other. Uh, and and I like this layering metaphor because then like you have uh, because it's it's very it's like Palestine Israel like you just need to scratch the surface of Israel to find Palestine underneath mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, so I'd like to create kind of like a virtual reality experience based on this layering metaphor and just so you can actually experience the maps the way that we did at the, at the exhibition where we printed them and okay. put, lay them out on the ground, but instead of just like having to pay a lot of dollars to, uh, to reach a specific place mm -hmm. and print them, we just do it in a virtual reality space. But there's yeah. like 50 different ideas that I want to do with these maps and the data yeah, that we're extracting. <laughs> we just need to, some time and money <laughs> and helpers. We need more people <laughs> working on maps. <laughs> yeah. Um... The, so we're we're coming up on on the half past, but are there any questions from our our listeners, our viewers? Uh, if you do, just put them in that little uh, rectangle with the question mark, and uh, I can broadcast them to the whole group. Um, the first couple of these, we had lots of questions, but people have been shy since then. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. <laughs> The one, I mean, one other question I had was how how this project's been received in different parts of the region. So, you know, in Israel, in uh, Palestine, um, in Lebanon and Syria, and then of course in you know Canada and and the U.S. So, um, because like you're saying, there are different, very different attitudes about. Um, you know, occupation in all those different areas, uh, and a lot of conflicting opinions. And I guess I'm curious how people are, have reacted to it. Yeah, so as I said, I've like just the mapathons, I can speak mostly to the mapathons. I've done 22 mapathons all over the world. So I've done uh, like in North America and Toronto and uh, uh, and Kitchener, I've done them in, uh, in uh, uh, in refugee camps here, I've done them in Amman, in Dubai, uh, I've done them all over Europe, in Milano, as part of the Milano Design Week, in, uh, in London at the British Library, uh, and at various places. So the, the nice thing about it is that it brings in a lot of different people from different disciplines. So you have designers, and you have map nerds, and you have GIS nerds, and you have uh, like just Palestine people in general, uh, people who are interested in Palestine. One of the, the dreams that I have is to actually run this mapathon in Palestine, Israel, um, mm -hmm. and just see what what would actually happen. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, because it's uh, like, it's one thing to just talk about it in remote. It's another thing to actually like, maybe just go to the place <laughs> where the, the maps are talking about. Yeah. Uh, and of course, there is, uh, in, in, I mean, there is a lot of anti-Palestinian racism all over the world. Uh, we did have a few threats, like especially in London and in Toronto, where people wanted to disrupt the events. Uh, and, uh, but eventually they didn't materialize. I think it's, uh, it's 
because I mean, we're not, I'm, to me, I'm not saying anything controversial. These are historical maps that were, yeah. like, they're not even made by us Palestinians. They're made by mm -hmm. the British colonial authorities. So I'm not saying anything new at all. Um, uh, and uh, uh, so, like, it's, to me, actually, actually, I think they have a lot of, these maps have a lot of potential to, like, kind of bring a kind of a step towards uh, a resolution to this conflict. So I'm, I'm a firm believer of the, of, uh, the one state solution where Palestinians and Israelis live in the same country, the, which is like the entirety of historical Palestine or modern day Israel. So there's, there wouldn't be Palestine or an Israel side by side. They would be like on top of each other. They're the same country. Mm -hmm. um, as equal citizens in an equal uh, in a democratic state, and I think this map, these maps show that, like, without actually acknowledging the history of what created Israel, uh, you cannot actually uh, go on to the future. Like, you can see, like, every time you scratch Israel, you see Palestine underneath. It's, you cannot forget that history, um, mm -hmm. uh, and that's I think part of the reason why Israel is so uh, so much in trouble right now. Like. You hear Israelis complaining about uh, about Netanyahu and the right wing coalition, and that's they're going to try to annex the the West Bank in or parts of the West Bank in a in a few weeks. I mean, what? <laughs> uh, uh, I just think that the, those maps eventually, hopefully, if I drew this mapathon in Palestine, Israel, they will actually help both Palestinians and Israelis imagine a different future where we can actually live as equal citizens in a single state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's super interesting. The, uh, we have a little bit, uh, so we have some questions about how people can contribute or be involved. Mm -hmm. um, do you want? Yeah, so like the easiest way to, the most direct way that you can involve, be involved is to actually start helping us with uh, vectorization. If you live in a place where you have resources to invite me or one of my colleagues to do a mapathon in your institution, or in your public library, in your art center, in your community center, I'm more than happy to help. I'm right now based in Beirut. I know that travel is really difficult right now, but I'm right now based in Beirut. Starting September, I'll be based in Toronto. Uh, 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 and I'll have those geographies accessible to me. Uh, uh, in terms of anything, other ways to help, like I'd, hmm, I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, yeah, just vectorization of the maps because we have a ton of maps. And like once we're done with the one to 20,000 scale maps, we're gonna go on to work with uh, more finer detailed maps like the city mm -hmm. maps and the master plans and things like that. Um, uh, so there's a lot of vectorization work to do. And if you're interested in just like, uh, uh, like if you, one of the things I'm really excited about is the potential for these maps to trigger, to trigger memories in the older generation of Palestinians who knew Palestine mm -hmm. before the Nakba. Um, and uh, so if you have a grandparent who, uh, uh, who remembers these things? Just take out the map, find find up find the place where they grew up as a child, and ask. Look at the place names in the map and ask them what do they think of uh, what do, what do the place names trigger in their memory and record that and send it to me. Uh, I'm at <laughs> Majdal on Twitter. Uh, yeah, because I'm trying. To, I think oral history is a big import is a super important part of uh, of how we remember, and I think. This uh, uh, these maps are a prompt for oral histories. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I think that's a good a good place to to end on. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for coming. This has been really interesting. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and so next week we'll Did be, I cut off? we'll be back at the same time with uh, Tim Wallace, uh, a little bit, but you, we got we got the gist of it, I think. Uh, okay. Thank you, and <laughs> to be here. Um, all right, it was good to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, Ciao. Okay.
So next week we'll be back with um, Tim Wallace, who's a geographer uh, and visual journalist at Descartes Labs. Uh, he previously worked at the New York Times where he was part of the team that did the maps of every building in the US. And he has a PhD in geography from uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, so thank you all for coming.